Du Ulf? Okay. Um, so, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, you know, there are several things I'm on, I wanted to talk about, but I want to just focus on, we're going to talk about false prophets, false preachers, and these kinds of things, and what the Bible has to say about them. And also, you know, the commands that God has given pastors when it comes to preaching the gospel uh, him, themselves, the true gospel, and not a false doctrine or a false gospel, but actually just preaching what God tells them to preach. So, so the first thing that, uh, that I do want to mention this, though, you know, I was thinking about this as well, you know, and the things about, you know, what we say and, and what it means when we say this or say that. You know, the Bible says that our words, you know, they're spirit and life. It also says that by the words of your mouth, you shall be justified and by the words of your mouth, you shall be condemned. Yeah. You know, and, and even in James, it tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, you know, and that a person that wavers, that wavers in their belief in uh, a system and stuff is that don't expect to receive anything from God, you know. And I think sometimes what we do is, you know, we just kind of flippantly say stuff, you know, that could be uh, doubting, that, that could be uh, words of doubt, words of unbelief, words of faithlessness and stuff, you know, because when you run around talking about, well, you know, and, and all you ever talk about is how bad something is or how bad it's going to be, you never ever speak words of faith and stuff. But yet you expect God to hear you when you pray. And so, and so what God has shown me was this, is that, you know, that we don't, um, that we don't very uh, often listen to what we say. We, very, we don't very often do that. And the thing is, is that we say that we're people of God, but yet we speak, you know, words of doubt, words of unbelief, words of faithlessness and stuff. Whenever you talk about worrying about this, and well, no, this is going to happen, and it's always on the negative side. It's always on the bad side that you're talking about, expecting something, you know, to happen that's really not of faith. See, right. the thing is, is our faith can't be, you know, when we want to uh, 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 claim it to be faith when you've built up all of these blocks of doubt and unbelief because of what's come out of your mouth, see? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, you know, when we examine our lives and examine our hearts on a daily basis, you know, then, you know, we ought to take into account, okay, so what am I be, what do I be saying and stuff? And, and, and really, I will tell you this, if you speak negative things so much, then you are blind to actually, when you actually speak stuff and somebody said, well, you know, you can't, that's not faith you're talking about. That, that's doubt, that's unbelief. You know, you need, and then you wanna, you know, you wanna justify what you're saying as opposed to saying, yeah, you could be right. Well, no, that is a faith. When we are truly, when we are truly walking in the spirit of God, then we're gonna take into account everything God says in his word, see? And really, a lot of people are destroying their lives spiritually because of the stuff that they allow to come out their mouth. Right. See? And yeah. I've been thinking about this for a while, you know, because, I mean, we've even attempted to talk about it up at Bible study, but we always, you know, God leads us somewhere else. But this morning, I know that he wanted me to talk about this just a little bit before I get into the, uh, to the other part of the message and stuff, is that, you know, when the scripture that says, be slow to speak, and quick to hear what the Spirit is saying. See, we don't want to hear the Spirit when the Spirit is telling us to shut up. We don't, we don't really want to hear that. When the Spirit says, okay, keep your mouth shut, don't say that. You know, that's doubt, that's unbelief, you know. And sometimes you have spoken so much doubt, so much unbelief, so much fear on yourself because you're scared of everything, you know. Well, you know, if it light, if the lightning hits over in downtown Auburn, it's probably going to get me too, you know. I mean, what kind of faith is that, you know? I mean, you know, the thing is, is that if we say that we're people of God, children of God, then our life is going to be a life of faith being substance uh, of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See? Yes. We understand that God will cause whatever we're praying for if we believe. Because Jesus said himself, you know, when you pray, believe. Yes. Right. When you pray, believe. 
And believe means that, you know, you are receiving from God what you pray for, you know, just as if you got it right now. Yeah. Even though you can't tangibly see it, you know, if you pray and if you have faith, then God says, you know, I will honor that prayer of faith. You know, I will honor that prayer of faith and stuff yeah. because you believe, you know. Yeah. The Bible says this about people that believe. He, they say that all things are possible to him that believe it. See? Yeah. So in uh and then look at uh Proverbs six two right quick. And I don't really know how much time we'll spend on it, but however long God wants to take it, then that's the time that we're gonna take. It. But in Proverbs um six two. Yeah, I gotta get back. I think I got so many Bibles that I use. I don't the, the one that I'd like to use. I can't even. I don't even know where it's at. In the bedroom. No, that's another one. <laughs> There's two. There's two. Those another one. <laughs> you know when I when I, something comes to me, I just pick up the first Bible I get, and yeah. and I guess it's a good thing to have them laying around the house. Okay, in um in Proverbs six two, it says. Well, we'll start in verse 1. He says, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with the stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. So whatever you say out of your mouth, then, you know, that's going to come to pass eventually and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to come to pass. See, because God says that the words that you are snared by the words of your mouth, mm -hmm. see? That's why, you know, when, when we understand, see, this is the thing that God has really been showing me lately, is that everything about your life has to be examined as to whether it's truly being, whether you are truly, you know, doing the things that God commanded you to do. You know, what you say out of your mouth, what you put before your eyes, what you allow in your ears and stuff. The relationships that you allow in your life with various kinds of people. All of those things, you know, if you're not looking at the right thing, listening for the right thing, you know, doing the right thing, you know, and, and fellowshipping with the right kind of people, that can affect your whole relationship with God in a very negative way. Yeah. See, that's why when God tells you to come out from among them, come out, out, leave them. People that you don't have anything in common with in terms of, you know, your relationship with God or even your life as a believer. An unbeliever cannot enrich a believer's life, you know, when it comes to God at all. Mm -mm. Not at all. If anything, they are going to negatively affect the way you live your life in honor of God. True. Because that honor that you have been walking in, you know, pleasing the Lord will eventually slowly start back walking to dishonor. Mm -hmm. See? Because, you know, you know, you become the company with, that you keep. Right. See? Yeah. I mean, you look at you look at our relationship and yeah. stuff. You know, our relationship is all about the Lord. Yeah. All of the company yeah. you keep is going to affect your relationship. See? Right. And the thing is that you don't want to be around anybody other than people that have the same desires and the same purposes that you have in your relationship to God. Yes. See, because look, I'll be honest with you. I, you know, when I'm in the presence of some people, you know, that are not born again, that are not saved, that are not living for God, even though they confess that they are, I can't wait to get away from them. Mm -hmm. Because nothing that comes out of their mouths is honoring and glorifying God. No. Nothing that comes out of their mouths is enriching your relationship with God. You know, the Bible talks about iron sharpening iron. And what that means is through our relationship with one another, through our conversation with one another, you know, we're helping each other to become better in our relationship and our walk with God. Right. See, that's what yeah. we're doing yeah. and stuff. And when your heart and your mind is completely and totally stayed on the Lord, that's all you want. Yeah. See? You only want to please God. You only want to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. And that's why you check your mouth, you check your eyes, you check your ears and everything. And not only that, you examine the way you're living. Right. You know, all yeah. those things are important because what does the Bible say about any individual that confesses that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior? The Bible says that you must be holy. 
Right. You must live holy. You must walk in newness of life. You must live a life that is absolutely pleasing to God. And if you love God, you want the same thing He wants. Amen. That's, right. That's why your arms are wide open when it comes to the things of God because you want everything that He has. Right. See? right. Yeah. You know, and you have people that run from the gifts of God because in their doctrines and their traditions and their denominations, they don't really believe in that kind of stuff. Mm -mm. Not they don't believe in healing. They don't believe is speaking in tongues. They, they think that, well, you know, I'm once saved, always so all of that is lies. Right. Lies. <laughs> Straight from the pit of hell. Right. Anything that's a lie, it is of the devil. Right. Why? Yeah. Jesus said in John chapter 8, he is the father of oh, lies. Yeah. See? And the Bible also says that in those people that were, were saying that, 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 that God was their father and stuff, but Jesus said, you don't even know who I am. Mm -hmm. See? And you got preachers and you got people who have no idea who Jesus really is. That's true. See? Right. Because the thing about it is, is that, you know, I got to know Jesus by spending time with him. Mm -hmm. I got to know Jesus by reading and believing his word and not questioning anything about right. it. See? Right. You know, I got to know Jesus without hearing, you know, what, you know, the YouTubers have to say or what the the uh, Instagrammers have to say and all of that. See, yeah. God didn't tell me to, uh, to uh, 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 consult those those uh, uh, websites or whatever to really find out what it means in his Bible. Right. See, right. this is the point, the one thing that people miss. If the Holy Spirit of God lives in you, meaning that you are truly born again, that you have surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus, and that he is the one that directs your path, then the Holy Spirit will teach you everything you need to know out of this book right here. Amen. Not from anything you're going to hear on Instagram right. or YouTube right. or, 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 or L-Tube or, or V-Tube or any kind of tube. Right. See? Right. Because when you hear Jesus talk about, you know, living and walking in righteousness and holiness, number one, he says, what? Follow me. Right. Yeah. Right. Follow me. And then he says, believe every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of your father, God. Right. Believe every word. In Psalms, it says that the Lord is my shepherd. Right. I don't need nobody else leading me but Jesus. Right. Amen. And because of him being my shepherd, it says, I shall not want. Right. So what does that tell you right there? Everything that we need is in Jesus. Amen. We don't need to be going on these on these websites trying to find out, well, you know, is Jesus the son of God? Well, did Jesus have a girlfriend? And all this stuff, see? Mm -hmm. I, over the years, I've heard some of these dumbest stuff, mm -hmm. you know? Well, Jesus was really married. What? These people absolutely lost their mind. But at least they were right about that. He is married. To his bride. Right. Uh, those who are who are believers, those who have come to know him, you know, through repentance and right relationship, you know, with him and stuff. See? And see, all of that stuff, all it does is just screw people's mind up. Right. And you know why it screws their mind up? They want it screwed up. Otherwise, why would I continue to indulge in something that only creates more questions for me? Right. And cause me to really have to start worrying about, well, maybe that ain't true. Or maybe, see, to me, when people start making those kind of confessions and stuff, they don't have a relationship with God. Right. They don't have a relationship with God at all. Right. See? And so the thing is that when you have a relationship with God and you want to do everything to please God and stuff, you are, you are deemed a crazy person. Yeah. You're deemed somebody, you know, that, that really is off of the deep end and stuff. See? But you need to examine your own self. And this is what I do, you know, so that I don't, you know, so that I make sure that I don't allow myself to get caught up in all that stupid. Mm -hmm. What I do is I honestly examine my life. And I, if, if, if God showed me something, you know, I'm repenting of it. Amen. You know, yeah. and the thing is, I don't have to shout in front of me, well, I did this and I'm repenting. No, no. I go to the Father because that's where I'm supposed to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. If there's an issue in my life that needs to be corrected, it is not to be corrected by man. Right. It is to be corrected right. by God. See, right. Because I know Amen. that if it's corrected by God, something good is going to come out of it. See, right. And not only that, He is my Father. Right. I don't want anybody else correcting me but Him. Right. He yes. is my Father yes. and nobody else. Mm -hmm. See, yes. So why would I worry about what some clown says to me about something I don't care if he's a preacher. I don't care if he's a pastor. I don't care if he's this, that, or whatever. You know, 
He does not supersede, you know, my uh, the importance that I have with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Nobody, I don't even pay those guys any attention. See, mm -hmm. most of them ain't nothing but liars anyway. Yeah. They do not, you know, have any interest in preaching the truth. See, you know, people say, well, you know, y'all live in that, y'all uh, meet in that little old house over there and y'all have church over there. So, so what? It's not where you meet. It's what goes on where you meet. Right. See? Right. 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 It ain't got nothing to do with no yeah. building. Yeah. You ain't going to yeah. find anywhere in the Bible where God said a building has more authority over who I am. See? Right. A building can't do nothing for anybody. Right. You know, yeah. people may make, make, make people think that just because they enter a building, it has some kind of magic uh, authority and power. A building ain't got zero doo-doo power. None. Amen. Yes. None whatsoever. I don't care. Well, my church, I don't care about your church. Right. Whatever your church is, you know, if Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your church, you can forget about it. It ain't worth nothing. Right. <clears throat> and even if he is Lord, the attention that ought to be on him because he's the only one that can heal you, deliver you, and set you free from your sin. Amen. He's the only somebody that can do that. See? Yeah. So you all there up in church trying to look all pretty and prim and, and all of this stuff, and you got your preacher saying all of these, these uh, refined words and stuff that you like to, to hear him say, even though he ain't saying nothing. And those 15 syllable words that he used, you don't even know what they mean. <laughs> you don't know what they mean. But yet you go, oh, yes, we've got Pastor with a PhD, and, and he's also uh, got his doctorate and all of that stuff. <laughs> Chapter and verse where that makes any, uh, where that matters to God at all. I don't care what a PhD is. If it's a doctorate or what, that just goes to show you how much I know about that stuff. Because it don't matter to me. Your PhD is a doctorate. Is it? I don't know. I don't care. I don't have one. See? And I don't want one. See? All I want in my life is for God to say to me, well done, thou good and faithful Amen. servant. That's all I want to hear from God. Amen. I don't want to hear Amen. nothing from man because it does not matter what any man says or think about who I am in Jesus Christ. Right. And I could care less anyway. Right. See? Yes. And so when you when you when you tell when you tell people the truth and stuff, you know, they really don't want to hear the truth. Mm -mm. If if people wanted to hear the truth, the church would be uh, 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 healthy and vibrant and, and, and on fire for God or whatever, but it's not. No. Yeah. You know, you go to a lot of these churches, the most of them, you know, either you're going to be in a funeral home or you're going to be in a nightclub. That's right. One of the two and stuff. That's you're right. going to be either in a nightclub. He's huh? He's still filming. He's in lost connection. Yeah, I'm still filming. Okay. You know, and, and the thing is, is that it is that, you know, the Bible says that we're, to, as I said earlier, we're to seek first the kingdom. Okay, and if we're to seek first the kingdom, then that means that we seek God first more than anything. Yeah. That's what we do. We don't worry about all of this other stuff and all. And so, and so the thing is, is that if we're going to seek first the kingdom, that means that God is going to be in charge and that Jesus is going to be in charge and the Holy Spirit is going to be the one that's going to lead us and teach us and guide us, see? Yeah. And that, that's what's going to be happening and stuff. And so the thing is, is that, is that, uh, is that, <clears throat> is that when we are truly men and women of God, we have to understand we do everything concerning God. You know, we don't let man's opinions or man's doctrines or man's tradition enter anywhere in that whatsoever. You know, and so so the thing is, is that is that when we have focused our attention completely on the Lord, we're going to do the Lord's will. We're going to do the Lord's will. Now, back to what I was talking about, about what comes out of our mouths and stuff, is that, you know, you do not build your faith or strengthen your faith by talking doubt and talking unbelief. Right. See, James chapter 1. <clears throat> it 
take a giant tip for more. Let's see. Okay, in verse 1, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, you know, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith, nothing, nothing, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. So in other words, you know, if you don't really know what you believe and you will believe any doctrine that somebody throws your way and then it may not be true. And they say, oh, well, this here sounds a little bit, well, that could be, no, no, no. The Bible says if you don't stand on the word of God and believe what God says, wavering only gets you, you know, nothing. Right. It doesn't get you anything, see? And not only that, it reveals also that you have an unstable relationship with the Lord all because of the fact that you have no firm faith. Right. See, you cannot stand in faith as the Bible talks about. It. Now, he says, for he that wavers like a wave of the street driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You know, so James is saying that when you waver, you're double-minded. Right, yes. Because if you're a child of God, there should be no wavering. Right. Amen. You should believe. Right. Yes. You know, you should believe whatever it is that God said. See, most folks can't believe because they don't do the necessary things in their life to build up their faith in Christ Jesus. True. See? And the first thing that they need to do is that they need to hear the word of God. Amen. And believe it. See? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by, by the word of God. God. Yeah. See? It comes by hearing the word of God. And and, and and I will tell you, the person or persons that <clears throat> grow in faith the most are the ones that really have a hunger for the truth and want to hear the truth every bit of it. Yes, sure. See? Amen. Not just some of it, but every Amen. bit of it. Right. Yes. And what they will do themselves, you know, if they ain't getting it in church, they're going to find it in the Bible. Right. They're going to yes. find it through the Holy Spirit right. and stuff. And the thing is, is I'm, I'm saying this, you know, and, and first of all, let me preface this by saying, I'm not trying to get anybody to come to this church because most of y'all think that, you know, something is wrong with us because we meet in the house anyway. Right. But like yeah. I told you a while ago, you know, it doesn't matter where you meet, right. you know, because it's funny, you know, people say, well, you know, you can't be meeting in the house, you know, uh, that's not really what God intended. Show me in the Bible where God told those uh, apostles to meet in a temple before they start meeting in people's houses. That's true. Huh? Yeah. Just Tell me that, see? You, you know, that ain't nothing, but, you know, the yeah. thing is, is that, you know, and that's true, Karen, It people were totally comfortable following Jesus outside yeah. in the hot yeah. and dry desert. Mm -hmm. All because they really wanted to hear the word of God right. and they didn't care what the cost of it was for them to hear it. They were going to do it, what whatever was necessary to hear the truth. We don't have people hungry for the word hardly at all anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't have people that, that will actually bow at the feet of Jesus and, 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 and seek him and cry out to him for holiness and for righteousness. They ain't going to be doing that. Right. You know, it's amazing to me, yes. you know, that... People will run, you know, to take a picture with their favorite athlete. They will run to have dinner with an actor or an actress, you know. You know, they will run, you know, to just be in the presence of one of the most famous uh, uh, college coaches, you know, in America. But they won't doggone give Jesus the time of day. Mm -hmm. They won't give him the time of day. Yeah. See? You can ask them, do you know, you know, and see, this is the thing that, that bothers me. 
You can ask a peep, you can, because I mean, you know, with people from being a, a professional ball player at time and stuff, you know, people used to offer me thousands of dollars just for an autograph. Just for an autograph. See? And you ask them something about, hey, wait, but wait a minute, look, man, you know, you can become a child of God for nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be saved. Jesus died for your sin for nothing. Right. See? This autograph don't mean nothing right. when it comes to your eternity, and right. it really doesn't mean nothing, period. See? Right. Right. All it yeah. means is that, you know, that you've gone absolutely nuts over the things of the flesh, but you won't give Jesus the time of day right. or any of your time. Right. See? You're more concerned about, you know, getting the famous person's autograph and get when you die, you know, what, what benefit is that gonna be for you, you know, when you die? No. No. Jesus ain't gonna be saying like, hey, come on up in here. You got Roy Jackson's autograph. I mean, <laughs> huh? <laughs> really? You, you know, you go up there talking about, well, you know, I, I, I got this, this Frank Baybar player's autograph. And he's a preacher too, you know. That ain't gonna mean nothing to God. No, no. God ain't looking at your stupid. Right. God is looking at your heart. And then God is saying, you know, to you, you have a foolish heart. Right. That's right. You deemed things important that had nothing to do with really what was important. Right. See? Right. Amen. God says, uh, hey, how about that time? You know, you were sitting out in the parking lot, you know, and 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 and, and, and you wanted an autograph, and the and and, and, and the, the, the the player, my son, asked you, said, Hey, if Jesus was to show up, if you knew Jesus was gonna be here, he said, Would you have shown up? Would you come for Jesus in an empty parking lot just so you could see him and talk to him? Mm. Would you do it for him? See? See, these are things that people forget. Right. God is not going to be impressed by anything that you have done on this earth that had nothing to do with his will. That's true. Right. See? That's he ain't going to be interested in none of that. That's right. You can try to throw it up all you want to. Well, you know, I'm a conservative Christian and I'm a a, a, a fiscal Christian and I'm a, a, a Baptist believer. God don't care nothing about none of that crap. That's right. yeah, See? That's right. That's right. None of it. Because there's nowhere in the Bible that it says that God is interested in what you call yourself. See? That's right. God says, you know, you got it wrong from the very outset. He said, because instead of worrying about being a fiscal this and a conservative this or whatever, he said, if you really had known who I was, the only thing that would have mattered is you knew that I was your father and that you were my son. Right. Yeah. See? Right. Amen. That's what's important to me, said the Lord. See? My relationship one-on-one -on -one with you is what's important. See? Right. He says Amen. all these, these crazy titles and, and, and little things that you attach to your name and all that, he said you did all of that. He said I ain't have nothing to do with that. That's true. That's, right. That's true. He That's said you run around and you call yourself Christian. He said I never told you to be one of them. Right. He says I told you to be born again. Amen. See? Right. Amen. That's right. Because being born again is a whole lot different than being somebody or identifying with something that a pagan worshiper called you. Right. See? Right. Back in Antioch. The right. disciples or the yeah. apostles, see. Mm -hmm. That stuff ain't important. See, this is the thing. People who claim to have a relationship with God, they more try to attach themselves to identify with things in the world than being separate under God for holy purposes. Right. See? Yeah. Because when you separate it under God for holy purposes, you're not gonna have very many people out there in the world <laughs> that want to have anything to do with you. Right. See? Yeah. Especially the religious. That's right. See? The religious, see. You know, y'all wouldn't believe the blowback I get just simply because I have no problem telling the truth and however God tells me to tell it with whatever tone or with whatever, because uh, 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 it, it's not anger and stuff, but the fact of the matter is I'm obedient to God and I can care less what man thinks. Right. I can care less about that. See, and I'm not trying to be all arrogant or all this or that or whatever. That's just the way it is. Ain't that what Jesus told the disciples? Mm -hmm. right. I mean, the, uh, 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 the Pharisees. Pharisees. Yeah. He didn't care what they thought. He yeah. said, look, you all ain't nothing but a bunch of snakes, vipers, whitewashed tombs, open sepulchers. You're she children of the, the devil. devil. <laughs> see? Yeah. You know, and, and see, the thing about it is, you know, the reason that they don't have a problem with Jesus 
is because they don't really know but know Jesus because they don't really care about what Jesus said and what mm -hmm. Jesus thought. That's they right. don't care about that. No, they don't. None whatsoever. Because if that were the case, then when a man called by God, when a man called by God, you know, would preach the truth, if you were truly of God, man, you'd be agreeing with everything he said. Yes, and I'm anything, I mean everything, because you know for for sure one thing that whatever he says, you know, it truly follows God, it's mm -hmm. yes, the truth. Right. right. It's right. the truth. Yes. Why? And why would a man called by God have such a conviction about the truth? Because God says the truth is the only thing that's going to set you free. Amen. Yes. And not only that, Jesus yes. said, I am the truth. Amen. See? Amen. Amen. I ain't preaching nobody but Jesus. Right. I'm not yes. preaching anything but the word of God. Right. Amen. See? That's right. And do you think I care about what people think about that? No. no. <laughs> because on judgment day, I'm going to look face to face with my Lord and my Savior. Yes. And he will say to me, well done, my good and faithful Amen. servant. See? Yes. I'm only yes. interested in obeying the Lord. See? Right. Because, you know, to me, it's important to obey God. Right. Yes. To do oh, my Father's yes. will because yes. he told me that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. See? Yes. Any freedom that I got from sin. It came because of my relationship with him. Amen. Amen. See, Amen. I don't have to go to a, a nutty psychiatrist, <laughs> you know, and get like a band-aid for my problem. Right. See? Yeah. I can go straight to the throne of God yes. in Christ and say, Father, please deliver me, help me, forgive me of my sin. And you know, he knows that my heart is sincere. He says, as you have believed, be it unto you. I'm free. Right. Amen. I'm free in Christ. Right. See? I've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See? And I don't care about, about what people think about me. I don't care about people making snide remarks about our church being small because ain't no love there. I'm going to tell you something. Love, love. Ain't can't nobody <laughs> that ever love come love to you. this church cannot say. Right. That they've not been loved. Right. See? Yes. Because we have committed ourselves. When I say we, my wife and I, we have committed ourselves to love the brethren and even to love the knucklehead too. That's right. See? It's true. It's true. Because yeah. we have, in our relationship with God, we have the only thing that can set them free from their sin, or the only person, rather, that can set them free from their sin. We know him personally. Mm -hmm. We have experience with him and we can testify of him, you know, from truth and from a right relationship with God. We can tell you exactly, you know, what the Bible says and what Jesus will do for them that believe. Amen. We can tell you because Amen. we've experienced that. Amen. See? Amen. We've experienced that. See? And all the glory be go belongs to God. Right. Yeah. Amen. All of it belongs to him and yeah. stuff. And why would you sit up in a church? year after year and week after week, and instead of you becoming stronger in the Lord and more hungry for the things of God, you lose taste for anything that's truth. Mm -hmm. You don't have a taste for the truth. Mm -hmm. See, Because every time a taste for the truth was presented, you didn't want to have anything to do with it. Right. Why? Because you were told another truth. Right. Yeah. You were told another truth, see? Right. And you believed that other truth instead right. of believing what God has said. See? Right. And the thing about it is God warned you that there was going to be false Christ and false prophets and false preachers and false teachers. He told you that was going to, that was going to happen. Right. That That's there right. were going to yeah. be people that were going to deceive you, that were going to lie to you and stuff. Yes. And, so, yes. and so when that happens in your life, you can't blame anybody but yourself. Turn to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. <clears throat> okay, Second Peter chapter 2. Let's look at verse 1. It says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately or privately shall bring in damnable heresies, 
even denying the Lord that bought them. Think about that. He said, there are going to be pastors and preachers coming up in front of you. And he says, they're going to be bringing unto you damnable heresies. Stuff that's not true. Wrong teaching. Yeah. You know, wrong teaching and, and wrong everything, see? Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is, is the fact of the matter that they are presenting themselves as children of God, but they are actually children of the mm -hmm. devil in disguise, mm -hmm. see? And he says, damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. God is not going to let these liars and these deceivers get away with what they're doing to his people. That's right. You know, to purposely preach a lying gospel, a deceiving gospel that leads people astray and that causes them to be damned in the end. Mm -hmm. See, that's what they do. Purposely. They're not of God. If they were of God, they would do what? They would tell you the truth. Amen. They would tell you what the Lord said, see? Yeah. And the reason that you know you have a whole bunch of them in these pulpits it's because you got so many different doctrines out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I've said time and time and time again, denominations are not of God. Right. There's not one place in scripture where God says, okay, I want to create all these different denominations. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. God would never do that. You know why? Mm -hmm. Everything about denominations are totally opposite to who God is and what God stands for. Amen. See, Amen. there's a different doctrine. It's a different God because they're their own God. Right. See? You can't call God your father when you're not obeying him. Right. You can't call God your father when you're not doing those things that you have been commanded to do as a pastor, as a preacher, and as a congregation. Right. See? Right. If you're not doing God's will, you know, God has turned his back on you. Yes. There is swift destruction awaiting you. And I will tell you, part of that swift destruction is the fact that God has turned you over to whatever it is that you got going on in the church, you know, opposite to who he is. Right. See? If you want to deny the Lord, if you want to uh, uh, shame, be ashamed of the Lord, God will let you be all of that. Yes. See? He is yes. not going to make you do anything. No. Amen. You know, he right. says, I'm going to give you the opportunity to choose. Right. And now, as I've said before, God gives you the options, and he tells you what they are. Right. Yeah. What do you mean yeah. when you when he tells you that straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it? What does that tell you? There ain't a lot of people going to heaven. That's right. right. There ain't a lot of people who are on this earth right now who are truly walking with the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, Amen. they're not walking with God. Because if that were the case, Jesus would have said that if, they, if there were many going to the uh, uh, straight and the narrow way, he would say there are many that are going to the straight and narrow way. Right. No, 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 no. He said there are only a few going to the straight and the narrow. Right. And the only people that are going to make it through that straight and the narrow are, there are going to be people who love the Lord with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. There are going to be people that don't lean on their understanding because they don't trust their understanding because they know what it was like before Jesus became Lord Amen. of their life. Right. They knew the way it was, see? Yeah. They said, no, 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 no. I don't want to be in control anymore, see? Right. You know, yeah. why do you think I gave my life to Jesus? Yeah. I wanted him to be in control because yeah. everything that I did was not for my good, no. see? Amen. Was not for my good. None of it was for my good, see? Okay. So the thing is, is that I trust the Lord. Yes. I have faith in God. Yes. I believe yes. that every word that God breathed and spoke and had written in this book, I believe all of it. Amen. 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 All of it. See, yes. I'm not looking to divvy yes. it up. Well, I think I believe this right here. Well, no, I think I'm going to believe this over here. Well, no, you you wrong because if you don't believe this over here, then you ain't right with God. I do not get my instruction from any man. Amen. Amen. I do not trust or believe any man to tell me the truth about what God has said right. about how I live. Right. <clears throat> because what these guys are doing in these churches, they're quite comfortable lying to people. And you know yeah. why? That's what the people want. Mm -hmm. They do not want you telling them the truth. No, they don't. They want you to tell them a lie. That's right. Yeah. They want you to tell them a lie. Yeah. But these guys came for the purpose of setting up in these churches 
and deceiving people, mm -hmm. lying to people. You know, and when they lie, mm -hmm. I mean, it ought to be like, you know, the top of your head ought to blow off. <laughs> and the reason I say that because it should be a warning mm -hmm. that when they lie, automatically their father is the devil. Right. You ought to know that. Right. You ought to know that. Right. If you know the 8th chapter of John, you know that the devil is the father of lies right. and that those who follow him, they're going to do the same things that he did. Yes, sure. When he, Jesus yes, sure. told those guys in chapter 8, he says, you are of your father the devil, your father the devil, your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do, which is the lie. And the Bible says, Jesus said it himself. He said, in the devil, he said, ain't no truth in him. Right. Ain't no truth in him. But the thing about the devil, he can't never repent. Mm -hmm. But if you are lying and deceiving people, you can repent. Mm -hmm. You can get right with God and stuff. But the thing is, most people do not want to get right with God because they found comfort in a false doctrine and they found comfort in lies and deception. Right. Yeah. That's what they've yeah. done. See, it's true. Yeah. They've done because those lies and those deceptions have been presented so mm -hmm. much close to the truth, so much like the truth that they believe the lie, as opposed to studying to show themselves approved and figuring out this ain't true. This is not of God. Right. See? Right. Look, right. I'm gonna tell you something. If I knew that if I didn't serve God, if I knew. That if I did not get saved or born again and give my life to Jesus and my destination was going to hell, I'm going to find me a Bible and I'm going to eat that server up and I'm going to find a person that I know is right with God because I want them to tell me what I need to do to be saved. Right. Amen. See? Amen. What I need to do to be saved. See? Yeah. And the thing is, you yeah. can't go to, honestly, you can't go to most of these uh, pastors in these churches and they will lead you into true salvation. Amen. Right. Right. All they will do is tell you, okay, get baptized. Get dunked in the water. Be a yeah. wet sinner instead of a dry sinner and you'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they're saying. Sprinkle yeah. water. Sprinkle it. Sprinkle. Oh, sprinkle me good, preacher. Sprinkle me good. That ain't doing nothing but making you wet in some places on your, on your chest and in yeah. your face. That's all that's doing. Right. Because repentance is a change of your heart. Amen. And the Amen. only person that can make that change is in Jesus. your heart is Jesus. Amen. That's right. Amen. Not your preacher, not your church, not your pastor, nobody. Right. But Jesus. Right. Why? Yeah. He's only somebody died for you. Right. Nobody else died for you but him. That's right. He's the only somebody that died for you. See? That's right. And these people just lie, 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 lie. Just to make you feel good about yourself. See? Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is. And you don't. Mm -mm. You know. You, well, yeah. and you're right. Because eventually, you know, the devil going to be on you again. He'll make you. He'll allow, He'll leave you alone and allow you to feel good in your flesh. Okay. See? Because he knows it's not real. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. the reason you feel good, it isn't because of something the Lord actually did in your life. It's because somebody lied to you and deceived you that, oh, well, yeah, the Lord, this and the Lord. You know, and, and people act like, well, you know, he said the Lord. He said Jesus said it and all of that. The yeah. devil said the same thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What did the devil tell Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? You ain't going to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You shall not. Sh Look, you're going to be like God. See? Yeah, and whenever you deny the truth of God, you make yourself. Your own God is what you do. Right. Because your life depends on how you feel about what you're doing. You know, the stuff that you allow in your life and all of that. You know, that is a doggone red ticket to hell, if you ask me. Right. Anytime you are in charge of your life, you know, that's not a good thing. Right. And what that also is saying is that when you made your confession, you never really died to the old person. No, see? Yeah. Because, see, when you die to the old person, there is really no more acknowledgement of that person ever being in your life anymore. Right, right, see? Right. They're supposed to be dead. Right. They're supposed to be gone, kaput. Right. You know, you know, buried deep in the ground. Deep, 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 deep in the ground. Yeah. See? To where, you know, you don't want that life anymore. See? Right. You know, when people give a testimony, if they talk more about the old life than the change that Jesus has made, I really question whether anything happened right. when they said that they got right. saved. Right. See? Because I can assure you, when I got saved, I wasn't thinking about nothing that I used to do other than the fact that, you know, well, because I didn't know anything at the time. 
I, I mean, you're talking about a baby. I'm just straight out the womb trying to figure out how to live, mm -hmm. you know. Amen. And the thing is, so so I'm, I'm talking to myself and I'm asking myself questions and stuff. And immediately, you know, like Jesus said, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit will be with you, but he shall be in you. See, right. so yeah. when you first get saved, he's right there with you and stuff. Right. So I'm asking questions, but I don't, I don't wonder if I can do that anymore. Because, see, she didn't get saved when I got saved. Mm -mm. And so I couldn't ask a sinner. <laughs> 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 so, <clears throat> so I'm asking, you know, I'm just kind of talking to myself walking down the hall. And I, and I hear this still small voice and didn't know what he was until later on, you know, when I matured in the Lord and grew some. But the Holy Spirit said, no. And he said no, and I knew that I could trust that. Yeah. Right. And so I didn't do it. Right. See? And I said many times as well in here, I said like, if I'm not sure about something, whether I should do it or not, I'm not doing it. Right. See? Yeah. I'm not doing it, and not not going to even entertain it. Right. I'm going to wait on the Lord to give me some truth about that. See. Right. Because the Holy Spirit will give you truth. People will probably try to manipulate the situation to let you do what you want to do all because they like you. Mm -hmm. They lying. They don't mm -hmm. like you. No. If they know if they're trying to help you to do something that they know gonna harm you or will harm you, they don't like you. Right. See? You know, and you know, and you know they don't love you. See? Mm -hmm. That's for sure. That's what I'm telling you about these preachers that stand in the pulpit. And they say, oh, well, you know, we're, we're the greatest church and we love you. We, I love you and all that. If you're not telling people the truth as a pastor or telling people the truth, them. period, you don't love them. Mm -hmm. yeah. You do yeah. not love them, see? Because if you love them, you would give warnings as to, look, this right here will, will kill you spiritually. So you don't really need to do that. And stuff. Right. Hanging around with that drunkard, you don't need to be hanging around with them. Right, right. You know you just got delivered from, from being a drunk yourself. Right. So why would you go back into the devil's den and do the same thing and tempt yourself? See, the people like to talk about, well, you know, the devil tempt me. No, if you willingly go in a situation to where the devil is, is you know the devil is over there. Mm -hmm. No, the devil ain't tempting you. You tempting him. Right. See, it's what you're doing. Right. See, God tells you where to go and what to do about where you, where you go and stuff. Yeah. And the thing is, is that, is that, you know, God tells the preachers to warn people because he's their watchman. You're the watchman. Right. right. Turn to Ezekiel 33. <clears throat> Let me make sure I'm in the right place. Okay, in Ezekiel 33, okay, the Bible says, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people. Okay, and Ezekiel is the prophet. Mm -hmm. He's the prophet, and God is telling him what to go and tell these folks, these clowns. Right. He says, <laughs> Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man uh, of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. So translation, when you hear the truth of God, coming from a pastor that's telling you what God has said, warning you about your sin, warning you about the relationships that you have, warning you about the false doctrine that you're walking in and that you're believing, and you still choose not to hear him or believe what he said, God says, and I'm, and I'm just making it simple here, God said it ain't nobody's fault but yours. Right. He calls, because he told you what I, what, I, what I told him to say to you, see? And he says if the people, and, and, and God likens it to sounding a trumpet. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't really hear what the, what the man sent by God is saying, you're in dire straits. Right. You're in a bad, bad, bad situation. And then he says, 
Verse 5, he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. Again, it's his fault right. because he didn't pay attention. And not only that, you know, judge it. Even if the prophet, if even if the prophet says it, judge it according to scripture. Right. Judge it according to what the word of God says. Right. So he says, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword coming and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Right. See, at the watchman's hands is what he said. See, so if I'm a pastor, you know, and I'm preaching truth to you, and you can back it up and, and, and verify according to scripture, you know, knowing that, you know, and, and really it's a warning to repent. Yeah. It's really what it is. It's a warning to repent from your sin. And you say, I ain't doing that. See, right. God says ain't nobody's fault but yours. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's right. He says, you know, but if the watchman does not warn you, then I'm blaming him too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? I'm blaming him as well. So the preachers are going to be held accountable for preaching, for not preaching the truth. Right. See, for not preaching the truth. And I'm talking about the truth as written, not the truth as to what others say it is. See, Jesus said in John 17, 17, as I've said many times, thy word is yes. truth. Yes. See, the word of God is the only truth that we've got. Mm -hmm. See. And we must believe every single word of God. Amen. Every single word. When Jesus was talking about the narrow way and the straight way, see, you can apply that here as well. Because if people are not going to hear what the preacher is saying, you're going to Broadway, baby. Yeah, you do. You're going to Broadway, see. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, is that even though that preacher's going the same place you going, you can't blame him. No. You can't blame him. Right. Because you have that same Bible that he was reading out of. Mm -hmm. Or supposedly reading out yeah. of. See? So you can't blame anybody for your own sin. Right. Nobody whatsoever. And then he says, in verse 7, So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. It's what God is saying. Mm -hmm. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. Mm -hmm. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. See? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. It goes as well for those folk who are truly born again when you don't witness to somebody and God has opened the door for you to be a witness and a testimony, then that person's blood is going to be on your hands as well. That's true. See? Because it's not just happenstance that we have people that we encounter in our walk on a daily basis, you know, or, or, or at different times and stuff. You know, that's why when you walk in the spirit, you'll hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And if the Holy Spirit says, minister to that person, he'll tell you what to say. Right. Because God said, if you just open your mouth, then I'm going to feel it. See, mm -hmm. I'm going to feel it. See? And then the thing is, is that <clears throat> you will know by the peace that you have by the Holy Spirit, if you're supposed to say something to this person. Now, there will be times when God will say, no, don't, don't even worry about it. Don't even, don't even waste your time with them. See, because the thing is, is that I learned that because when, when he would tell me, I would, you know, people would be, well, you know, well, y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me. You know, please pray and all this stuff. God said, don't pray for them. Mm -hmm. God said, don't pray. For them. God already knows everything about everybody. Right. That's what you need to understand. Right. See, and so we, we have made prayer to be so important, which it is, mm -hmm. but we've made a mockery out of prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the people say, you know, well, please pray for me. Pray in. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, if somebody asks me to pray, I don't need to do nothing other than just pray. Right. right. I don't need to be telling anybody I'm praying or none of that stuff. See? Yeah. Because they don't even know whether you're praying or not anyway. Right. All they said was somebody pray for me. So you pray for people and stuff. See? 
as opposed yeah. to wanting everybody to see that you are praying because you put it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. See, I don't understand. What would you do if you didn't have no Facebook? Yeah. Huh? You'd have to call people and ask people to pray for you. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. yeah. Without anybody knowing about it. So why all of a sudden now we got Facebook and all these other search engines and stuff that you can say, put this stuff on Facebook so everybody can see, well, you know, clown, you know, pray for so-and-so and so. -and -so. <laughs> see? Wow. I mean, yeah. what's up with that? People are so interested in putting themselves out there to make <coughs> themselves look like something, you know. And really, if they would just shut their mouth and keep their hands off the computer or off of their phone and just simply bow their head and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up whoever it is to you, see. And that's just between you and God anyway. You know, God ain't answering the prayer no quicker or, God, or not at all just because you put it on, posted it on Facebook. Right. Yeah. See? No, you don't get on Facebook. And see, the thing about it is, is that if we build ourselves up in our own holy, most holy faith, as it talks about in Jude, then we would need people to be praying for us. Right. See? Right. Now, there are times when, yeah, we do need people to pray for us and pray with us. Yeah. But for the most part, when the last time you pray for yourself? Mm-hmm. When the last time you built up your faith by trusting in God to answer your prayer? Mm -hmm. When the last time you did that? See, mm -hmm. the thing is that we want everybody else to do what we have been given the same power, the same authority, the same faith to be able to do if we would just believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's right. See, and that's the whole thing. You know, it is hard to get to get faith and to believe in God when you're not even being taught that, and if you're not being taught that, you're not even thinking about that. See, because your mentality is we're just going to deal with, well, you know, I just go to the doctor and let him do this. And I'll go to the psychiatrist or the psychiatrist. I'll go down here. I'll go down there. You know, you know, the, the first thing that you need to begin doing, if you haven't already done it, is build yourself up in your faith. See, right. and because a lot of times, be honest mm -hmm. with you, you don't really know where a lot of people are in their walk with God. Mm -hmm. The Bible even warns you to lay suddenly, lay hands suddenly on no man. Right. See, you know, because some people you wasting your time by praying for them and laying your hands on them and stuff. Mm -hmm. See, and we think that just because we pray, oh, something is supposed to happen. Most people don't even believe anything gonna happen when no, they pray. That's true. They that's don't. True. I mean, they just pray because it's a thing that they're supposed to do. They heard you know, when people say it. pray, all we need to pray is stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and you just cussed out your doggone husband. You just cussed out your wife. Mm -hmm. You just slapped him upside his head. You just poured hot skillet water on him and stuff. <laughs> and so now you're gonna say, oh, I'm praying. See? I don't like that yeah, part. right. You pray. You pray. You pray. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. But see, the thing is, is that, see, the devil, you know, will make you think that you're pitting yourself against somebody else. But in actuality, he'll pit you against those people. And he's the one standing over there in the corner laughing like I'll get out. Right. See, yeah. laughing like I'll get out. Because I'm telling you something. And, and I really need to emphasize this as well. In the eighth chapter of John, when, 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 when Jesus says that, you know, uh, I do the will of my father. And he says that you you do, you do the will of your father and stuff. Let's just turn over there real quick in John chapter 8. And I want you to keep in mind that these are the children of the devil right. that are doing this stuff. They're the children of the devil when they are not believing God. And, uh, <clears throat> and Jesus just called them out. See, this is the thing about Jesus. Jesus never leaves any question about nothing. Right. You know, he doesn't leave any question about anything because if you go into the Word, you'll find it in the Word if you just simply search it out in Scripture. Yeah. Whatever it is that you need to know, it's in the Bible. Right. You know, the thing about it is if you don't, if you have a problem understanding how to be a husband or stuff if, uh, 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 because your father wasn't, a, a, wasn't a, a real husband to your mother, then, you know, if you trust God, He will show you how to be a husband. It's in there. Right, yeah. You know, if you need to know how to be a father or a mother, it's in there. Right. See? It's in the Bible. God is not going to call you to do something or be something without showing you and telling you exactly how to do and what to do right. about it. See? It's going to be found in Scripture and stuff. Parents, raise your children up in the things of God. It's what the Bible says. Yeah. 
in the morning, not at noon time, late at night, you know, all the time, remind them of who I am and stuff. Yeah. And when you do that, you know, that's being a good parent. See? Because not only are you trying to instill in them to have that relationship with God for their own lives, but when they grow up, you've got that all in you and stuff, so you can do the same thing, you know, once you get married and have children. That's See? Right. God is interested in there being a legacy, so to speak, so that people, you know, will train their children and their children, when they're grown, will train their children. And then there's like a domino effect all the way down until Jesus comes back. See, because the most important thing in anybody's life is having a right relationship with the Lord. Right. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Amen. It doesn't matter how much money you've got. It doesn't matter how many cars you've got or any of this stuff. Amen. See, right. it only matters your relationship with Jesus when you die. Because the Lord said himself, what profit did a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? That's right. And lose That's his soul. Right. You know, and the thing is, is that God even tells you. He says all of this stuff on this earth, he it's says heaven and earth going to pass away. Yeah. It's going to pass away. But whatever my word is said, and whatever my word is, and whatever my word represents, it's going to last forever. Yeah. That's what he said. It's going to last forever. So in John chapter 8, um, I think it's around verse 40. Let's just start in verse 42. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Question number one. Even because you cannot hear my word. See, Amen. These are people that are claiming to have a relationship with God now. Right. But Jesus said, he says, you don't even understand me. He said, you can't even hear me rather. He said, you can't hear me. And notice the word, cannot. Yeah. You cannot hear me, is what Jesus is saying. And so the first thing that comes to somebody's mind, what, were they deaf or something? You know? Yeah. Doesn't have anything to do with it. We have a choice that when we hear the scriptures, we can either actually hear it and believe it, or we can just Ignore it. forget all about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people do that too. Yeah. And so he says, uh, you, why do you not understand my speech even because you cannot hear my word? And what does he say in verse 44? Let's read it. You are of your father the devil, and because you're of your father the devil, the lust of your father you will do. Now these guys couldn't do anything that Jesus was doing, and they couldn't understand anything he was saying, and they couldn't even hear what he was saying. Why? Their father's the devil. Yeah. Their father yes. is the devil. That's right. And he says, he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Now think about that. So when a person is, is doing the devil's bidding, Jesus is saying, ain't no truth then. Right. Because they're walking and living like their father, the devil. Yeah. See? He said, the lust of your father you're going to do. See? And so everything that the devil does and did, you're going to be doing the same thing if you're not a child of God. He says, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. The blood father of liars and lies is the devil. And people who practice that, whether it's from the pulpit or in everyday life, their father is the devil. Yes. Right. So, there ain't no truth there. That's right. You know, I mean, when a person is like that, you know, and you call them out on their lie or whatever, okay. instead of them saying, well, yeah, you, you probably right. I, you right. I, I shouldn't have done that. No, they ain't going to say that. No. They're going to try to justify it. No, well, you just don't understand. You know, no, that ain't really what I meant by it. But, you know, you're going to believe what you want to believe and stuff. And that's what they do. They justify their lying. And how do they justify their lie? They don't even think about it. Mm -mm. They think about it being the truth. I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I know what I believe. I don't care what you say. I know what I believe mm -hmm. and stuff. And so they justify that and they continue to live that way. And, below, and before you know it, they become numb to the truth. Right. Numb. They can't, just like Jesus said, they can't hear him. 
That's the same thing that happens to people that shelter themselves from the Lord and from the truth right. is that they can't hear nothing that he say. No. Truth doesn't mean anything to them because they don't believe that is true. Right. They know what the truth is and they know what they believe. And so, and so he says, uh, uh, 45. Okay, 45, okay. He says, and because I tell you the truth, you, you believe, believe me not. not. See, you believe me not. See, and people will make any kind of an excuse, you know, to not believe God's truth, yes. but believe the truth that they've been told and lied to about by right. a lot of these guys and stuff. And so they says in verse 46 or 47, he that is of God Heareth, heareth God's God words. Heard. Ye therefore hear, hear them, them not, because, because you are not of God. God. See, don't waste your time trying to uh, argue with somebody or convince somebody. Don't even waste your time with them because they can't hear nothing you say. They can't hear what you say. Jesus right. said it. They cannot hear what you say. Right. See? Even though they hear the words, they're not hearing you. Right. They're not hearing what you're saying in the context of what you're saying uh, 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 in the words that you're presenting to them. They can't understand that, see? And it's all because of the fact that God is your father and the devil is their father, mm -hmm. see? Absolutely, totally different, totally nothing in common whatsoever. Right. Nothing in common with them. And so, in... Uh, In, uh, in verse 37, I just read that in the same chapter, it says, I know that you are Abraham's seed, Jesus speaking, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. Yeah. See? And so they kept telling them that, they, that God was their father. So what did he say? I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. See? But yet they said that God was their father. And they had no idea who God really was, who he really was. So, let's see where I want to go from here. Turn to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Okay, Matthew 24, 24. Look at verse uh, 4 first, and then we'll go to verse 24. In verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. He says, um, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. The main thing I wanted you to see there was what he said in uh, in verse twenty four. In verse four, he said, "Take heed take he that no man deceive you. No man. Notice he said, no man yeah, deceive yeah. you. Yeah. And so when you've got people going all over the place trying to find, you know, some answer that they are looking for and stuff, and when you tell them, look, it is in the Bible. God, this is what God says about what you think." that you need to believe. He says that yeah. God knows what it is. And so instead of you taking that person's word for it because they're telling you the truth, what do you do? You go looking in other, in all, that song you say, looking in all the wrong places mm -hmm. and stuff, and that's what they do. And they accept what this person says in this strange place because of 
who somebody told them that that person was right. and yeah. what somebody told them about that person and stuff. But God yeah. never told us to go, as I said earlier, to go seeking after things that really have nothing to do with him. Mm -hmm. If you really want to know the truth, you can only find it in the Bible. Right. Amen. God continually Amen. tells us thy word is it's true. Truth. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. It's what he says, though. And so we have to believe God instead of uh, uh, believing man. Amen to that. <laughs> and so, and so, verse 24. Uh, in verse uh, 24 in Matthew 24. Okay, the scripture says, uh, For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that it were, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And those are the people that are truly following the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. He says, If it was possible, you know, he would deceive the very elect. And so Jesus is out on front street saying, beware of deception. That's what he's saying. Beware of deception. The reason these people get the way that they are to where they don't want to hear the truth, they want to be lied to, they want to be deceived, and all of this is for that very reason, they are listening to people who are telling them this stuff. Right. See? And like uh, Peter said, you know, they come into the church for that very reason. You know, it's to deceive people. And, and you know, and people aren't smart enough and they don't love the Lord enough that, that, uh, that they will continue to allow themselves to be deceived that way. Now, in verse 36, I just glimpsed down at it and I'll just go ahead and read it as well. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father. You know, and he's talking about the second coming of the Lord. You know, they asked him, Lord, what would be the sign of your coming? You know, yeah. and Jesus said, you know, be not deceived, what we said in verse 4. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so the thing is, is that Jesus is given a warning, in my, you know, from my understanding. He's given a warning, he says, that no man know, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, know not the angels of heaven, but my father. Only. But, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as it is in the day, as in the days uh, that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah uh, that, that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. And that's what's going to happen. See, people don't know when Jesus is coming back. Mm -hmm. God said he's coming back. He's oh, yeah. coming back. Oh, yeah. He says, but nobody knows when he's coming back. And so what people take that as, as meaning for them, for some of them is, well, shoot, I can just keep doing what I'm doing and stuff. And then they never change anything. They continue in the same vein you know, uh, doing the normal things that they've been normally doing. And this is what Jesus is saying. And then he goes on to say, um, they didn't know what was going to happen until what? The flood came. Mm -hmm. And most people are not going to know what happened until they die. Right. And then it's too late. Right. And then it's too late. Yeah. See? Right. The flood came and what happened to all those people that were out there doing their own thing and continue to do it. They all perished. Yeah, yeah. It's too late. They, everybody perished. It's too the late. only people that didn't perish were knowing his family. Right. That's it. Yeah. Then, Off of the whole planet. Right. See? So don't think that God will not, you know, manifest his wrath against perversion and sin and stuff. Because he will. Yes. Did the oh, same yeah. thing as Sodom and Gomorrah. No different. Yes. And stuff. And so. And so Jesus said, they didn't know until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And then he says, then two shall be in the field, one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what, your, what hour your Lord doth come. See, he said, you need to be watching. Mm -hmm. I need to be wanting you to watch and stuff as your pastor and stuff. 
to what? You don't know when Jesus is coming back. And there's another thing that you need to consider as well because this is fact in Scripture. It has been an appointment. Everybody's got an appointment with God right. to die. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's going to die. Right. And just like Jesus said, you don't know the day of the hour when he's going to return. You don't, you don't know, know the day of the hour when you're going to die. die. Right. See, You know, anybody could die tomorrow. Yeah. Anybody yeah. could die this next second. See, yeah. And I can promise you some people are dying as I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. It's done. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything if you got right relationship with God. Right. right. See, that dying right. doesn't mean anything because God says that's going to happen. Right. You are going to die. Right. See, you have an appointment to die. See, and God is the one that sets that appointment. See, and some people, though, they rush that appointment because of the fact of continuing in sin. You know, and becoming more and more and more and more sinful that you become a stench in God's nostril like Sodom and Gomorrah and he just absolutely blew that up. Right. I mean, just took it all out. I mean, wasted it. It's a waste place now. Yeah. Literally and stuff. And you know what he's saying? I'll do the same thing to you. Continue in your sin. I'll wipe you out and stuff. And you don't even know how you're going to die. Nobody knows how they're going to die. Right. All you know is you're going to die, see? Right. You know, but the thing about it that 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 gives me some peace is, is the fact that when God talked about those of those people who died who were of God and who had a relationship with him, he used the word sleep. Right. A lot. Sleep in Jesus. He is asleep. He used that term when he was talking about Lazarus. And then he had to speak on earthly terms to his, his disciples and say, okay, you don't understand? He dead. Right. See? So he had to speak to him in those terms. But he talked about being asleep right. and stuff. See? Peaceful. Yeah. And I mean, and I believe that's what happens to those who are truly uh, in the Lord and stuff. I don't care how they die or whatever, but they're going to sleep. You know? They're going to sleep in the arms of the Lord. Mm -hmm. See? In the arms of the Lord and stuff. See? But see, people take too much stuff for granted. They think that, well, you know, I know that I'm going to heaven because I go to a four-square church. Because I go to a church that's got a thousand members and my pastor's got 59 degrees and all mm -hmm. that. Chapter oh. and verse for that. Yeah, okay. he said so too. Chapter that's and verse for that. See? And see, these, these hey. pastors and stuff. That's the idiot's guide to the Bible. Say again? That's the idiot's guide to the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, the uh, the thing is, is in uh, go to Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. You know, I told y'all earlier that you know that Jesus he handpicked his disciples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Handpicked them. Even Nobody the got to vote them in. Mm -hmm. See. Even the devil. <laughs> <laughs> you know so I mean he handpicked his disciples and stuff and so the thing is is that obviously most of these folks he didn't have nothing to do with in, that, in terms of picking them and all mm -hmm. you know because of the fact that you know if a, if a pastor is called by God he's going to preach the truth Right. he's going to preach the truth and um uh, what did I tell y'all? 2 Corinthians 11? Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at verse 13. Okay, it says, uh, But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. They're going to make you think that they're of God or make you believe that they're of God. Because whatever it is that they can do to make themselves appear to be a servant of the Lord, that's what they're going to do. See, that's what they're going to do. Hucksters, that's what they are. And he says um, in verse 14, and no marvel. He said, don't be shocked. 
He says, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. See, see the, 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 the light in this regard is in relationship to a person that is born again. Didn't Jesus say that we're the light of the world? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't he say, I am the light? And he says, because I am the light and you are the light, he says, you shall not walk in darkness. Right. See, these people that manifest the transformation, because the devil's going to do it through uh, people. You know, so, and they're going to act like they're all oh, God and this and that and believing in the Lord and stuff, but they're not. See, they're transforming themselves. And so Paul says, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, mm -hmm. the devil's ministers, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Right. See, they work iniquity. They tell lies. They deceive. They manipulate. They do whatever they've got to do to, to uh, be able to hide their disguise, you know, as being a child of the devil and trying to uh, 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 manifest themselves or uh, make themselves appear to be children of God or children of the light and stuff. Paul said they transformed themselves as the ministers, ministers, what do we call preachers? Ministers, ministers. Yeah. see, youth pastors, ministers, see, those are the people, you know, uh, people that the devil will have in those positions. Right. Any position in the church, the devil's going to try to work his way into that church through people. Yeah. It's what he's going to do. And how does he do it? Through deception, through manipulation through blinding people to the truth and stuff. But that can't happen unless you allow it to happen. Right. Because right. he can't put nothing on you that you don't want. Yeah. The devil can't do that. He can't do that. Because the Bible says, I've given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. Right. See, so you have the power and you have the authority to be able to overcome that stuff. Yes. So, let's see. I'll just close with this. Jesus commanded his disciples to teach others exactly what he had taught them. Yes. Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And you can find that in Matthew 28, 20. He condemned the replacing of God's commandments with traditions and human reason. Speaking to the Pharisees, Jewish religious leaders of his day, he said, for laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men. All too well, you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. That's what we have going on in the church right now. That's true. You know, that's exactly what we have going on in the church. The traditions of men, the doctrines of men, you know, and, you know, they got a, a, a commode in the back and they just flushed everything about God, just flushed it down the toilet because mm -hmm. they didn't want to have mm -hmm. anything to do with that. See, man's doctrine would never, ever look anything like God's doctrine. No. God is holy, God is righteous, God is a spirit being. As it says, I believe in John, God is a spirit, yeah. and they that worship him must worship, worship him yeah. in spirit, spirit and, and in truth. truth. Yeah. And the thing that I, you know, that I, I, I want to suggest before we close is that make sure that in your own personal life that you fill your heart with the word of God. Yes. That you fill your spirit with the things of God. That you have a developed, even more of a hunger for the truth of God right. see? Yeah. and make yeah. sure that you stay away from whatever and whomever God told you to see yes. because God knows best nobody knows better than him Amen. and whatever he tells yeah. us to do that's what we need to do and that's what we must do because when God commands you to do something and you don't do it it's disobedience right. it's disobedience it's self-righteousness and stuff yeah it's wrong, wrong. wrong. it's an absolutely wrong and stuff and, 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 and also, you know, please examine your life in regard to the things that you allow to come out your mouth. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible says that 
as I said earlier, the words of our mouths will be justified or will be condemned. Mm -hmm. See, so you most definitely want your words to be the words that are pleasing to God. Right. Don't yes. speak any doubt. Don't speak any unbelief. If you don't have the faith to believe something, then keep it to yourself and start building yourself up and say, right. Lord, you know, it reminds me of the man when he asked Jesus to pray for uh, uh, his son. He said, he said, uh, and Jesus asked him, said, do you believe? He says, he says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. See, he knew that he had to be, he had faith to believe. But at that moment, and I believe it was because of the fact it was his son mm -hmm. yeah. and he loved his son. And so he was having some problems, you know, getting that faith up, you know, but God knew the desire of his heart was sincere and was real. And as a result, Jesus did it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he answered that man's prayer and stuff. And see, and this is what you've got to take your relationship with God very, very, very personal. You cannot be flippant about your relationship. You cannot be flippant about the words that you allow to come out of your mouth. You cannot be flippant about what you put before your eyes because what you put before your eyes will affect you in two places, here and here is what it will do. Mm -hmm. See, you only want those things that are good and that are worthy of praise, you know. And yeah, we all like to watch movies and stuff, and ain't no problem with that. But don't let there be cussing in them. Don't let there be sex scenes in them. Don't let there be um, perversions. perversions of any kind in them. You know, homosexuality, you know, that kind of stuff. Because, see, God holds us all responsible to guard our own heart. Right. He tells us what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And he will witness it in your spirit, you know, Sometimes if you don't really fully get it or understand it, but you'll get a witness in your spirit and you'll know what you ought to do because that's what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do, lead, teach, and guide you in the all truth. And last but not least, learn to trust the Holy Spirit. Right. Learn to trust him completely and, 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 and totally and stuff. And don't say things you know, that you know are not true. And I'm not talking about the teasing and stuff, you know, it's okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know, stuff that you say, oh, well, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I yep, I don't think that, I know that there ain't nothing wrong with that. Really? Do you really know? Well, yeah, I know, I ain't nothing wrong. I said, did you, were you over there? No, I wasn't over there. Well, you don't know, see? You don't know, see? You know, I really, you know, <laughs> as much as I change with you though, but for real stuff, I want to make sure that I know the truth and that I tell the truth. And if I don't know the truth, I can't tell you it is the truth. Something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, but people think that, well, they just blow something out of their mouth. Oh, well, I know that's right. No, really. You, how do you know? Did you check it out? No. Well, you don't really know. And then the thing about it is, remember when I said earlier about how people get mad at you for telling them the truth? They'll ask you a question. You'll tell them the truth. And now that they know the truth, they're mad at you. Because you told them the truth and stuff, see? That's not what I wanted to hear. Yeah, and that's exactly <laughs> what happens most yeah. of the time. It's not what they wanted to hear and stuff. And that's what we've got to be uh, conscious of. It's what we say, what we do. And the one question is, uh, really, is this something Jesus would do? Is this something that the Lord would have me to say? You know, ask yourself those questions. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, I would much rather ask myself the question and the Holy Spirit say, well, you know you ain't supposed to do that, you know? What's the Holy Spirit for? Yes. He has a ministry in your life and you need to allow him to do it. So we'll close with that and until next week, the Lord will, we will be back again. Amen. God bless y'all. Hallelujah. God bless you too, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you. Love you, Ken. Miss you. We miss you. <laughs> <laughs>